In South Africa, a convoy of Interpol agents led by Lynn is transporting a prisoner known as Keith, who shares stories about his career with a company called Red Mountain. As they approach the border, the truck in front of them suddenly stops, causing Lynn to immediately become suspicious. Suddenly an army comes out of hiding and opens fire on them. Lynn wastes no time and starts fighting back, using her fighting and sharpshooting skills to defend herself. Soon all the enemy men are outnumbered by Lynn's team and begin dropping like flies, but unfortunately Lynn is shot in her left hand, forbidding her to move fast. She is still determined to protect Keith though, so she ignores her wound and takes the driver's seat, driving out of the area as quickly as possible. Meanwhile on a beautiful beach in Florida Keys, Travis and his father-in-law Frank are fishing together. Today is the anniversary of the death of Travis' wife and son, so he and Frank are throwing their ashes in the ocean. Afterward they return to the house where Frank quickly falls asleep, but Travis decides to go to a bar to drink more. While chatting with the barman, Travis sees some men arrive and realizes that they are following him, so he makes a plan. Travis goes to the bathroom, and the two men follow, but to their surprise, Travis is not inside the men's restroom. He is actually hiding in the women's bathroom, and when he comes out, he grabs a piece of metal and puts it in the door to lock the men inside. Then he mixes some cleaning products and throws the mix inside the men's bathroom before lighting it up, causing the smoke to start suffocating the thugs. They start coughing and begging for help, so Travis unlocks the door and the men confess they are from Red Mountain. The company wants Travis back, but he refuses. Travis returns to the bar and he sees his best friend Jim, who still works as an assassin for Red Mountain. They talk for a while, and Jim tries to convince Travis to return to work because Travis has been on a break since his family died. He also explains that their former colleague Keith must be rescued from Interpol, so Travis is needed for the mission. Travis says no and tries to leave, but he quickly changes his mind when he hears they will be paying $1 million a day. That night, Travis rides with Jim and they discuss the plan, agreeing that Travis will be sent to Hong Kong to make contact with Lin. Speaking of Lin, she calls her young son Christopher, who lives with his grandmother while his mom works. She makes sure he's fine and promises to come back soon. The next day, Travis disguises himself and knocks on the door of Lin's apartment. He introduces himself as an old friend of Lin from Oxford and learns from Christopher that Lin will be coming home soon. Before leaving, Travis grabs Christopher's bag pretending to compliment it and quietly steals his phone. By hacking the phone, Travis discovers Lin is flying back that night, so he finds the quickest flight to South Africa, where Lin is currently located. Once he makes it to the airport, Travis keeps up his disguise until he manages to sit beside Lin and tries to start a conversation, but Lin doesn't chat much and leaves for her flight. To stop her, Travis calls Red Mountain and they pull some strings to cancel Lin's flight, causing Lin to come back and chat with Travis some more. Afterward, Travis asks her to dinner, and she accepts. At the restaurant, Travis pretends he's a salesman and mentions his family, impressing Lin with how much he cares for them. Then they rent a hotel bedroom and spend the night together, although Travis can't stop thinking about his dead wife. The next morning, while Lin is taking a shower, Travis takes a bunch of information from her phone and gets ready to kill her. He quietly enters the bathroom and pulls the trigger on Lin, but suddenly he is back on the bed because that had only been him imagining how things would go. Not wanting to make an orphan out of Christopher, Travis leaves without killing Lin and calls Jim to say he's got Keith's location. Suddenly Lin shows up and points her gun at Travis, asking him to get on his knees, but when he does, a car passes by and gives him the chance to take out his gun. They both open fire and after exchanging a few shots, Lin manages to shoot him right in the chest. As Travis realizes the blood is coming out of his chest and falls to the floor, he begins seeing happy memories of his family and thinks he's finally reunited with them, which makes him happy. However moments later Travis is shocked to wake up in an operation room. He screams at the top of his lungs, and Dr. Helen helps him calm down until he's regained control of his senses. Jim is there too and begins explaining what happened. Red Mountain has been doing this procedure for a long time, which is an experiment to bring people back to life. There is one catch though, the victims only have 24 hours left to live, as shown by the timer attached to Travis' wrist, which is already counting down as 24 hours. At that moment Wetzler, the big boss behind Red Mountain, arrives and asks Travis for Keith's location while expressing his disappointment with Travis' work. Then Wetzler gives the job to Jim instead, which shocks Jim because he doesn't want to do the wet work again. Unfortunately he doesn't have a choice or his family will be killed. After Wetzler leaves, Jim tells the doctors to kill Travis and leaves too. Helen prepares the syringe and tries to give it to Travis, but he quickly becomes aggressive. He steals a scalpel to escape the bindings of the chair, kills the guard, and then captures Helen as his hostage. As they leave the room, more guards come and start to shoot him, but he used to be the best for a reason and kills them all fast. In the middle of the gunfight, Travis is shocked to suddenly see his son, and Helen explains that hallucinations are a side effect of the procedure. Once Travis is sure nobody else is following him, he frees Helen. Then he finds a public phone and calls Frank to tell him he's not coming back, thanking him for everything. Next he finds a taxi parked nearby, so Travis threatens to kill the driver and steals it. Meanwhile Keith is doing a recorded confession for the Interpol in a big room in a hotel. 
he tells them everything he knows about Red Mountain's dark secrets and comments on Wetzler's inhumane treatment of people. Since Red Mountain wants to make a procedure of bringing humans back to people, they've killed random people to use in their experiments. The doctors would examine the bodies and leave them to rot if they weren't compatible or didn't survive the procedure. One day, Keith and other colleagues discovered the basement where all the dead were piled up, and Wetzler commanded them to put all the bodies into one dump site and burn them together. This traumatized Keith and finally gave him the push to quit Red Mountain, that's why he's been targeted. While Keith talks, Lynn wanders around the room and peeks outside the window. She quickly realizes that there's a sniper on the building on the other side of the street, who turns out to be Jim. Lynn immediately warns everyone to get down but it's too late, Jim opens fire and kills a bunch of agents. Lynn goes after Keith and protects him, but before leaving the room, Keith takes the camera's memory card. Then Jim calls his colleagues, telling them to search the building. Soon Lynn and Keith are chased by Red Mountain, and once again Lynn uses her great skills to kill everybody. While dodging panicking civilians, they manage to make their way to the exit, but they don't realize that there are two gunmen behind them, ready to shoot. Fortunately Travis shows up and drives over them to stop them. Lynn and Keith are hesitant to go inside the car because they can't be sure of Travis' intentions, but they have no other escape options, so they follow him. Jim sees this from afar and is disappointed to know that Travis is now helping their target. Travis drives the taxi he stole as fast as possible as Red Mountain chases after them with open fire. The trio decides to work as a team and while Travis drives, Lynn shoots back, and Keith tries his best to stay hidden because he's an important witness. After a few very long miles of chasing, sadly Keith gets shot by Jim. Eventually Travis pulls a crazy move with the car to make their enemies crash, then he drives to a secure beach. Keith dies as soon as they take him out of the car, allowing Lynn to see the memory card in his hand and take it. In the Red Mountain headquarters, Jim calls Wetzler to inform him that the mission is incomplete, which leaves Wetzler furious. One of their men suddenly arrives with the Interpol's camera, but to Jim's surprise, there's no memory card. He gets nervous because Wetzler will kill him if he finds out, so he orders his men to go to Hong Kong and kidnap Christopher. Then Jim calls Lynn and informs her of what they did, causing Lynn to fall on her knees as she hears the terrible news. Travis tries to comfort her before negotiating with Jim over the phone, learning that Jim wants the memory card in exchange for Christopher and agreeing on a place to meet. First though, they need to prepare. During the drive, Travis sees the hallucination of his son in the middle of the road and begins having flashbacks, and Lynn has to make him snap out of it. Moments later, Travis takes Lynn to the old headquarters of Red Mountain and enters his hidden office. Travis takes all the ammunition he left there and prepares everything they need, including bombs, while Lynn admires a picture of Travis' family. Afterward, Travis and Lynn drive into a slum neighborhood and talk to the head villager Amal to ask for his help. Travis confesses that many people in the village went missing because they were taken away by the Red Mountain to become their lab rats, and a furious Amal accepts to help to get his revenge. A few hours later, Travis doesn't have much time left when he finally meets with a Red Mountain group led by Zack. This guy thinks Travis and Lynn are by themselves, but Travis whistles and everyone in the village emerges with weapons in their hands. While discussing the exchange, Travis starts to feel dizzy, falling on his knees because of the side effects that weaken him. Zack gets angry and tries to point his gun at Travis' head, but suddenly Amal shoots Zack and a commotion begins. The villagers may not have much experience in combat, but they fight against Red Mountain as much as they can to avenge the loss of their people. Unfortunately, Red Mountain has more weapons and are better shooters, so they quickly open fire and kill almost everyone. Lynn is worried about Christopher's safety, but Travis knows that Red Mountain wouldn't bring the hostage into the exchange. However two cars try to flee, and one of them gets blown up by the villagers. Lynn is starting to assume the worst, but Travis drags her with him into another vehicle to chase after the one that is getting away. Red Mountain is at a disadvantage because they don't know the area, and Travis manages to take a shortcut to appear on the road in front of them and block their way. Lynn rushes out of the car to kill the enemy drivers and happily reunites with her son. Watching them makes Travis think of his own family time and how he failed them by working too much. With only 36 minutes left to live, Travis says goodbye to Lynn and takes hostage one of Red Mountain's men, making him bring him to the headquarters for his final revenge. Travis covers his head with the bag they used on Christopher, and begins having flashbacks of the time Jim informed him of the death of his family. When they arrive at headquarters, Travis shoots the front guard and the whole building is immediately alerted. Jim and Wetzler look at the security cameras to keep an eye on Travis, and Jim uses the front booth communicator to get in contact with him. Jim tries to make him see reason, and Wetzler threatens to kill Frank if he doesn't stop, but Travis refuses to give up. He does try calling Frank to warn him, but the old man is not answering. Wetzler orders everybody to prepare, and while everyone is in their positions, Travis drives into the building and wrecks the reception. The men immediately search the car, but Travis is already gone. Meanwhile in Florida Keys, two men get inside Frank's house, but Frank is quick to outwit them and kills them without breaking a sweat. Back in the headquarters, the men are surprised when they see that Travis's car is full of bombs inside. They panic but it's too late, the bombs go off and destroy the room, killing most of the men. 
Jim prepares to protect Wetzler as he hears all the commotion noises in the corridor, indicating that Travis is killing all the people that get in his way. Frustrated, Wetzler calls another team to send them after Lynn. When Travis finally reaches Wetzler's office, he only has less than 10 minutes to live. First he fights all the incoming guards and kills them all, but he also is wounded in the process. Knowing he can't stop Travis, Jim goes to the bar to have his last drink. After a long and fierce fight, Travis sees his son again and apologizes for everything. Then he comes out and while wrestling against the last guard, he shoots Wetzler in the leg to stop him from escaping. Now Travis has two guns in his hands, pointing at Wetzler and Jim at the same time. Wetzler uses the chance to confess everything. It was he who sent orders to kill Travis' family after he tried to quit to spend more time with them. To make matters worse, it was Jim who pulled the trigger, but he had no choice because he had to save his own family. Travis shoots Wetzler on the shoulder to make him suffer, but he refuses to kill Jim because he's just another manipulated puppet just like him. Instead Travis asks Jim to stop the sniper they sent after Lynn and Christopher, and to repair their friendship, Jim does the right thing and makes the call. With only one minute left, Travis is too weak to even stand, so Jim grabs the gun and points it at Wetzler. At that moment more Red Mountain men come inside and warn Jim to stop, but Jim shoots anyway and kills Wetzler at the same time that Red Mountain kills him. Meanwhile Travis' time finally runs out and he closes his eyes, allowing him to meet his family again. He's happy to be reunited with them and he gets ready to spend his eternity together, but at that moment, Helen's voice tells him to hang in there and Travis wakes up in the operation room again.